Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All uh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your valuable time and association this morning. Please take over the call, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Umagyanti Mirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya. Anjaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutala Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tumane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pachayane Shri Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Sitarane Pancha Kalpa Thiru Vizcha Kripa Sindhu Tvei Vicha Petita Anam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 4, Verses 6 and 7. Yasya Padeva Sloka Udaranti, Konuta Karma Rajasir, Navra Antan Charit Pumam, Aprayatam Magan Yasya, Hari Sudema Karmana. Translation O Maharaj Pariksit, to glorify Maharaj Nabi, the all sages component two verses. One of them is Who can attain the perfection of Maharaj Nabi? Who can attain his activities because of his devotional service? The Supreme Personality of Godhead agreed to become his son. So the Prabhupada's purport. The word Sudena Karmana are significant in this verse. If work is not carried out in devotional service, it is contaminated by the modes of material nature. This is explained in Bhagavad Gita, Yadnartha Kamana Nyartha, Loka Kam Kamavandanaha. Activities performed only for the satisfaction of the Supreme Lord are pure and are not contaminated by the modes of material nature. All activities are contaminated by the modes of ignorance and passion as well as goodness. All material activities meant for satisfying the senses are contaminated and Maharaj Nabi did not perform anything contaminated. He simply executed his transcendental activities even while performing yajna. Consequently, he obtained the Supreme Lord as his son. Brahmanyo nyakuto na beer, vipra mangala pujita, yasya barhi si yagyesam, darsayam masur ojasa. Who? is a better worshipful of Brahmas than Maharaj Nabi, who worship the qualified Brahmins to their full satisfaction. The Brahmins, by the Brahminical prowess, show Maharaj Nabi, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, in person. The Brahmins engaged as priests in the sacrificial ceremony were not ordinary Brahmins. They were so powerful that they could bring forth the Supreme Personality of Godhead by their prayers. Thus, Maharaj Nabi was able to see the Lord face to face. Unless one is a Vaishnava, he cannot call forth the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord does not accept an invitation unless one is a Vaishnava. Therefore, it is said in the Padma Purana, Sat karma nipa no vipro mantra tanti visavataham a Vaishnava guru nasya Vaishnava swapacha guru ho. A scholarly Brahmin, expert in all subjects of Vedic knowledge, is unfit to become a spiritual master without being a Vaishnava. 
A person born in a family of lower caste can become a spiritual master if he is a Vaishnava. <laughs> These Brahmins were certainly very expert in chanting the Vedic mantras. They were competent in performance of the Vedic rituals. And over above, they were Vaishnavas. Therefore, by their spiritual power, they could call the Supreme Personality of God him and enable their disciple, Maharaj Nabi, to see the Lord face to face. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments that the word Ojasa means by dint of devotional service. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, um, hmm. we have two prayers here. One is to glorify or both is to glorify Maharaj Nabi. And the second one includes the Brahmins who are qualified to fulfill the desire of Brahman, Maharaj Nabi. Any activity that's performed other than to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead is within the category of the material energy either contaminated. The word contaminated is very insignificant. Uh, material energy is a place of contamination for the soul. It explains that the soul is not meant to take on a material body. So the first contamination is that the soul comes and accepts something unnatural. This is mentioned in the second verse, in uh, you can bring it up, fifth canto, uh, fifth chapter, verse number two, five, fifth canto, fifth chapter, Mahat Seva Dwar Mahar Vimuktis Tuar Dwamri Osi Tat Sangi Sangam Mahatmanas Te. Chitta Prashanta Vimanaya Sridam Sadavo Ye. Translation One can attain to the path of liberation from material bondage only by rendering service to highly qualified spiritual persons. These persons are either impersonalists or devotees, whether one wants to merge into the existence of the Lord or wants to associate with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One should render service to the Mahabharata. For those who are not interested in such service, who associate with people fond of women and sex, the path to hell is wide open. The Mahabharatas are equipoised. They do not see any difference between one living entity and another. They are very peaceful and fully engaged in their not to go and work for the benefit of them. Hmm. Let's see here. I think maybe this is. Um, see, I think it go down to the end of the purport here. It says here, to take a um, to take on a material body is unnatural. Let me see what verse is that. Maybe it's verse number seven in the same chapter. Can't remember the verse, but. It, it explains that to take a material body is a unnatural. Hmm. I can't seem to locate the verse. Anyway, this is not the verse anyway. Hmm. And it mentions that to take on a material body is unnatural because the soul is by nature free from anything material or contaminated. So when we take on a, a material body, that is the beginning of our contamination in the material energy. And from that, the body has a designation. So we identify it as man or woman. It comes from a certain culture. So we have, we identify ourselves as being Indian or American or uh, Afro, 
we identify ourselves with the body. We have a certain set of parents. We connect ourselves with that. And then our activities in the material energy compound our consciousness more and more in the material concept of life. And so this is just piling on various types of material contaminations. So this is the nature of our association outside of the pure spiritual energy, which is unnatural for the soul. So therefore, any activity that's performed that is affected by or connected with the material energy cannot bring about our elevation in spiritual life. Only when we perform activities for the pleasure of the Supreme Survai Pum Sam Paro Dharma, Yedo Bhakti Ahok Sujay Ahoy Tukia Priyata, Yayatma Sukhusidati. It says only when devotional service is unmotivated, without, that means without any personal interest, and uninterrupted, that means 24 7, then devotional service will bring one to the play, platform of the satisfaction of the soul. The soul cannot be satisfied with anything less than un, uninterrupted and unmotivated devotional service. So the first verse that we read talks about, and this is here that any activities contaminated or connected with the modes. So what is that contamination? Connecting our consciousness to something material. Therefore, in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, in the third canto, it mentions devotional service in the mode of goodness, devotional service in the mode of passion, devotional service in the mode of ignorance, and then actually what is pure devotional service. So when, in the absolute sense of the term, devotional service means pure. Therefore, we can speak about devotional service as being mixed with karma, jnana, yoga, or various other elements of material uh, interests, or simply acting in the wrong way in the performance of devotional service and other acting within the modes of material nature. So Maharaj Nabi was not of that nature. He was completely free and he wanted a son. And he wanted the Supreme Lord as his son. And therefore the next verse describes the different, the ways which he, he attained this. Because he worshipped the Brahmanas to their full satisfaction, he, they favored him. So here is the point. One, in, in order to make progress in devotional service, one has to attain the favor of the Supreme Lord. And what is that favor? One has to take shelter of his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. Srila Rupa Goswami explains that in the, it is mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita that there are nine stages of devotional service. Adao, Strata, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anartha Nivritti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava, and ultimately Prema. The third stage, Bhajana Kriya, means to take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, work under that person's guidance, and eventually accept diksha, initiation from him. At that point, that is the beginning of devotional service. That's why Srila Prabhupada would always say, initiation means beginning. He would often indicate that during the initiation ceremonies that we are practicing devotional service to the point of getting an understanding of it, developing a taste for it, understanding, understanding its importance, 
and eventually coming to the part point of dedicating one's life. And that comes when one accepts Krishna's representative like that. And then the path of Krishna consciousness becomes uh, wide open. In other words, it becomes continuous. Uh, under the guidance of the spiritual master, one seriously and sincerely without change, without addition, without alteration, uh, executes the instructions of the spiritual master with diligence or with determination, that is the actual word, then one can make progress on, on devotional service. So that, that qualifies because here it says, unless one is a Vaishnav, he cannot call forth the personality of Godhead. So only the pure devotee can bring Krishna into the heart of his aspiring Shiksha or his disciples. So we have a direct connection with Krishna, which is eternal and without deviation. It's never lost. It's only forgotten due to our association with this other energy known as the Bahiranga Shakti, which covers our actual consciousness, making us think we are something other than who we actually are. And because of that, um, we cannot approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, by the mercy of Krishna, accepting the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. And here it says the Brahmins were certainly expert in chanting the Vedic mantras. And therefore, the spiritual master is empowered by the Lord to bring his disciple to the position of executing devotional service to the point where one can go back home, back to Godhead. Uh, engaging in full devotional service, when one is fully absorbed in devotional service, that is equal to seeing the Lord face to face. Here it's mentioned, Lord Nabi Maharaj saw the Lord face to face. But here, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments that the word ojasa means by dint of devotional service. So there's no difference to seeing the Lord face to face than being fully absorbed in the service of the Lord. And that is that is the synonymous definition of the word face to face like that of course on the perfectional stage of devotional service when one reaches the higher stages of prema not just prema but the more advanced form of prema then krishna is personally present and, and Prabhupada said just like i am seeing you and you are seeing me we can see krishna in the same way like that so this is the process here. So it's important that one has to uh, take shelter. The Maharaj Navi was only successful because he executed the process as given by the Brahmins who gave him the mantras. And therefore by the mantras he was in. So in our initiation ceremony, we get two mantras the first, when we chant, and when we see first initiation, we receive the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Of course, that is open to everyone. And therefore, it is, but when we uh, take first initiation, then we can move forward and progress in the quality of our chanting. But then the Guru Mantra is the second initiation, and that is the Gayatri Mantra. And that completes the initiation. So that mantra is given personally by the spiritual master at the time of the second initiation. Okay. So one has to follow the process, just like when one goes to an educational institution, one cannot make up their own lessons. One cannot uh, 
you know, create their own uh, homework assignments. <laughs> In other words, you have to follow the protocol as given by the institution itself in order to get the degree and to be qualified to learn the knowledge that is being presented. So in the same way, one has to very carefully, with good attention, follow the rules and regulations that are meant to elevate our consciousness to the platform of pure devotional service, which means above the material energy like that. Now Maharaj Nabi had a specific desire. He wanted a son. He wanted the Lord to become his son. Mm -hmm. This is a very elevated form of bhakti. Um, just like uh, what Devaki and Vasudev in their previous birth as Dara not Dara, but as Prishni and Sutapa, Prishni and Sutapa in their previous birth, they pray to the Lord to have a son like the Lord. And the Lord said, there is no one like me, so I'll become your son. <laughs> Sometimes we want, our, want a son like the Lord, and that is nice, but there can never be one there is no second person like the Lord. So we might say, maybe one might want a child that has many of the qualities of the Supreme Lord. That is also glorious. But here, certain requirements were put in place by Maharaj Nabi before he could actually have the Lord as his son. He had to perform austerity and only by that austerity and penance and devo in devotion not just austerity and penance but with devotion was he qualified to bring about the chanting of the mantras by the, the priest who performed the sacrifice and Maharaj Nabi was able to receive and you'll come to that as you read on in this particular section uh, the Lord as his personal son. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the points. But the main point in this verse is that uh, only by devotional service can I be understood as I am standing before you and thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. This is from the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says... And he says in another verse, Bhakya Mama Vajananti, only by devotional service, if one can approach me, there's no other way, not by philosophical speculation, not by mental speculation, not by austerities, not by penances, not by studying scripture, not by great intelligence, not by chanting mantras, not by performing charity, not by performing rituals, not by worshiping the demigods. None of these activities are competent to bring about the presence of the Lord in our life. Only when one engages in devotional service under the guidance of the spiritual master. Devotional service is not, is the energy of the spiritual world. It is called bhakti shakti. It is the energy, the pure energy coming from the source itself, Krishna himself. It's his internal energy. It's personified by Srimati Radharani. She is the epitome of pure devotional service. And therefore, when we take shelter of the devotional service, we are taking shelter of the pure energy, Srimati Radharani, like that. So... The spiritual master is also a shakti energy of either Lord Nityananda or Srimati Radharani, either coming from either one of those tattvas. Uh, Nityananda Balaram is Guru Tattva, Radharani is Prem Guru Tattva. Both are Guru in the, in the absolute principle of uh, 
of uh, giving the energy of devotional service or revealing the energy of devotional service to Krishna. Like that. Okay, so um, if we want to be successful in devotional service, we must take shelter of uh, the Lord's representative, the bona fide spiritual master, and work under his guidance. Sometimes we have an aversion to accept a spiritual master. That aversion may also be part of our karma from previous lives, or it may simply be we don't have the, we don't understand what is a guru, or we don't have the complete knowledge of the process of devotional service and how the guru is actually the manifestation of Krishna in the material world for our elevation in Krishna consciousness. But it's essential. It is not optional. One must accept a bona fide spiritual master. Okay, we can stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you, Maharaj, for a beautiful class. Thank you so much. Maharaj, I have one question. Um, you were talking about um, our devotional service should be unmotivated and uh, uninterrupted. But uh, being a practicing devotee, we always you know, need some motivation, some encouragement. So, uh, uh, so then how do I get uh, come out of this? Or uh, how do I encourage myself to not to have that kind of encouragement in my life? And I mean, I should only do by myself. Nobody should encourage me or uh, how, how, how to come to that level. We can take spiritual encouragement. We can take spiritual principles of motivation, but not material. It's not that we're motivated by something material. Like, well, if you serve the Lord, you'll, you know, you'll get this or you'll be like this. No, these are, the encouragement is that we purify our consciousness and we can have transcendental knowledge. We can have transcendental happiness. We can have a relationship with the Lord on a personal level. That kind of encouragement is required. We need that, but not material encouragement. There's encouragement can come from either side. So we should reject material encouragement because it's all about personal motivation. But spiritual encouragement is required and we get that in the association of devotees. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Is there anybody having any questions? Please go ahead. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for a beautiful lecture. Would you please explain again the difference between spiritual encouragement and material encouragement and why material encouragement is detrimental for us? Well, that's obvious. But what is the difference? I think I mentioned that uh, spiritual encouragement means that by engaging in devotional service, we receive the mercy of the Lord, which comes in the form of transcendental knowledge, transcendental happiness, association with the Lord, to some whatever to whatever degree we can obtain that association. It's not that material is well, if you engage in devotional service, you can be free from material suffering. Uh, we use that kind of encouragement for people who are just beginning, but that's not for a devotee who is 
engaged in devotional service, these are extra, extraneous to the process of devotional service, but they're also there. We use that in a preaching way. You want to be free from suffering and engage in devotional service. But that's a preaching tactic. And for one who is fixed in devotional service, the encouragement is that you can go back home, back to Godhead. You'll never have to take birth again in this material world, never have to accept a material body, never have to suffer the threefold miseries. We have to understand all the anomalies that one either hears about or experiences are all within the category of the three modes of material nature. Spiritual energy is completely pure. It is elevating. It is full of knowledge. It is full of transcendental happiness. Mm -hmm. So when one is experiencing transcendental knowledge or happiness, these are indications of one's execution of devotional service. Sometimes we use something, well, if you stay in devotional service, even if you don't become purified fully, fully purified, you can come back in a better situation in your next life and begin where you left off. Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita, Suchinam Simatam Gehe Yoga Brasta Pujayate, that the uh, yogi who doesn't finish in this life comes back in a good family with good, with good opportunities for execution of devotional service. But the real motivation is that uh, the soul by nature is looking for relationship. And that relationship is based on the principle of love. So we try to fulfill material love in this world through various categories of personalities. But it's not possible to find satisfaction and happiness in this world so we're looking for love so that the encouragement is if you want to taste the real the happiness of real love then serve the lord Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam, thank you so much for another very beautiful class. Maharaj, I have a question, Maharaj. Uh, you were talking about how initiation is very important, but uh, and that is just the beginning. And uh, we need to move on and go further and do the second initiation also. So can you please specify like... Uh, uh, why uh, and why both of them are so important? We hear that, of course, initiation is very important. It is important to get the mercy of the spiritual master. Uh, but can you please explain why we have to uh, and what other stages we would have to go through? You want to know the reason why we should take initiation? Well, you, the second initiation specifically. Um, the process of initiation is one, but due to misuse of the process of initiation at the time of Bhakti Siddhanta, he, he divided, the, I think it was Bhakti Vinod or Bhakti Siddhanta divided the initiation process into two. Formally, it's just one, it's Brahman initiation. It's called Upanaya Samskara. It's one of the 16 samskaras. 
but uh, we have been given the tool in order to qualify ourselves for the full initiation, we get a preliminary first initiation, which is first initiation. And that is called the Harinam initiation. But then after a year minimum and observance by the spiritual master, one can take the full initiation and then one gets Guru Mantra. Guru Mantra is the, the Gayatri Mantra. So actually the process has been, the initiation process has been divided into two because people were misusing the process and simply taking initiation, thinking they were Brahman. But Brahman is quality, not simply uh, having a sacred thread that doesn't make you a Brahman. You have to be exhibiting the Brahminical qualities and executing those qualities in the process of devotional service. Yes, that makes sense, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Okay. So you're looking for a second yet? <laughs> no, Maharaj, I'm not even first initiated. <laughs> Oh, okay, so this class is for you. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's what I felt, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maharaj. I, uh, some, I don't know why we feel reluctant towards initiation because it's actually... I'm eagerly waiting, <laughs> Maharaj. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually a very wonderful thing. But there are people who are reluctant for whatever reason. One should, of course, one has to qualify themselves, but that qualification is simply one's sincerity, that's all. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. For yeah, I wish you the best. <laughs> Thank you for your blessings, Maharaj. That really will work magic, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it says if you have the desire, then Krishna will send his representative. It says one, one looks for Krishna and Krishna sends Guru. And by, get, by receiving Guru, one can approach Krishna. Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Hi, well, Tiffany. I just wanted to just say thank you for always offering such a beautiful and thorough class. Your explanations are always so um, just full. <laughs> you always give us the, the full picture of everything, and I'm just very grateful for your class. So thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory is to you, all glory is to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Guru Maharaj, I've got one question, if it is all right to ask. Yes, yes. Um, you, you know, in your class, you said about the devotees who cannot completely attain a supreme in this birth, will take birth in the good family next in the next birth. So um, is there, will there be all the circumstances favoring in that birth or still the material energy affects you there in the second it, birth? Well, Prabhupada would say that whatever was holding you back in your previous life, you have to again face that in the present life. Mm. So you know, we stopped at a certain point, say we became 75 or 80% Krishna conscious. So we still have 20% to go. So therefore, the next life uh, helps 
we, in other words, in the next life, we will be automatically attracted to the process of devotional service. So as soon as we meet a devotee, that attraction will awaken again. And then, of course, being in the material energy, being in the material world, the material body, means again, we could again, we not only could, we could also go down, we could fall from the position that we attained in the previous life and even go down, back down. So, but you're given good facilities uh, upon receiving the next birth, that's all. And suchi nam simatam gehe yoga brasta prajayate. Um, that means one takes birth in a very uh, well-to-do family, but one does not have to work for one's livelihood and one can have enough time to execute devotional service. Or one takes birth in a pious religious family, using both, and then one is in that atmosphere of devotion as they take birth. <laughs> Yeah, so here it is. Yeah. Yeah. Suchinam Samatam Gehe Yoga Brasta Buddha. Brasta means fallen. Mm -hmm. Yoga Brasta. Brashto. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. So, so those of you who are practicing, you are already initiated. Prabhupada said, finish up in this life, go back home, back to God, and solve all your problems. And don't try to come back here again in, in a good situation because it's also risky. <laughs> exactly. True. Yeah. Any position in the material world is risky. <laughs> It is very risky, yes. Absolutely yeah. right. Thank you. We Thank have you. all the we have all the tools and we have all the facilities to make it back to Godhead. All we have to do is to, we have to perfect it. That's all. It's it's not hard. Just remain fixed in your practice of Krishna consciousness and avoid those things that take away. Therefore, the scriptures say, know the difference between what is favorable for Krishna consciousness and what is unfavorable and avoid the unfavorable and execute the favorable. And that's where the spiritual master comes in. He can actually tell you to by inquiry, what is favorable and what is unfavorable. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we have one more question in the chat window. Yeah, yes Maharaj. There is one question in the chat. Like yeah, we can read. Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is from Ravi Rawat. Uh, there are cases in ISKCON where some Maharajas have given initiation online. Do you think this format is going to be followed in ISKCON worldwide more due to current situations? I'm eagerly waiting for my first initiation, your aspiring servant Ravi. Hmm. Well, due to the situation, it seems to be an, um, an unavoidable option. I'm faced with that same uh, decision. I'm trying. Personally, I would like to do it in person because I think there is a qualitative difference. But if worse comes to worse, 
rather than letting the disciple wait too long, then this line option is, is an option. <laughs> but again, it's not, I don't feel it is as personal and as joyful as the personal initiation. Initiation ceremony is a very joyful occasion. It's a beautiful occasion. It's very joyful, surrounded by so many devotees and uh, the presence of the spiritual master, the atmosphere, it's such a, there's a feeling of, you know, wow, I finally made it to this platform. I finally made it to where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> there's a sense of happiness. So that's there, even online, but we don't find there is so much association in that online time. So I'm not against it, I'm, but at the same time, I prefer the other, this uh, particular situation where we are in. I hope we're not forced into it. In some cases, some of the spiritual masters feel it's they don't want to wait any longer or the disciples don't want to wait any longer. So they went ahead with the online initiation. Personally, I'm waiting as much as I can for things to open up where we can actually do things in a personal way or, you know, in a in, with personal association. But that's my feeling anyway. So different spiritual masters have different understandings of how they want to conduct their uh, initiation process. For second initiation, I don't think it's a problem for online, but the first initiation I feel should be done in person. Thank you, Maharaj. Best wishes. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna, is there anybody having any more questions for Maharaj? Please go ahead. If there are no more questions, we can end the call here, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your beautiful, beautiful class and nice question answer session. Thank you once again. I would like to offer my obeisances, Maharaj. Mancha Kalpa Taro Piyasya Kripa Sindhu Pya Eva Chapatitana Pavani Pyo Vaishnaviyo Namo Nama. Jai 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 Jai